Krishna. Dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. Um, translated into Anglo-Saxon, Hive means haven. So we're trying to create a safe haven, uh, a place where a person is safe. There's no place in the material world where anyone is, everyone is safe. Padam, padam, vipadam, natesham. But in the haven, it's a safe place. In the material world, everybody is after everybody else for something. But here, we're only trying to give transcendental knowledge by reading Srila Prabhupada's books and creating a safe haven. So, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotra from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, a text 412 to 416 by Srila Sanatana Goswami. <clears throat> Beautiful glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam and indirectly the Bhagavad Gita, which is also in the same category uh, eternal, uh, transcendental, empowered incarnation of Krishna in sound, spoken by Krishna himself. So, Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram goes like this. Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, <coughs> Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandodita Aditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O light heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavata, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Mandistadaka Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostate My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chuchita kada hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kanta yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we have an esteemed guest tonight, Sham Kishore Prabhu Das Brahmachari from London. Uh, getting the band back together again. Hare Krishna. Welcome to you. <clears throat> okay, we reached chapter 6, <clears throat> Bhagavad Gita, as it is, beginning with text 36. Krishna is continuing to explain to Arjuna just how important it is <clears throat> for us to control our minds and senses. Text 36. Asang yatat ma asang yatat mana yogo dushprat ba 
iti me matihi vashat mana tu yatata chakyo vaptu mupayataha. For one whose mind is unbridled, self realization is difficult work. But for one whose mind, but for he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. That is my opinion. Purport. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead declares that one who does not accept the proper treatment to detach the mind from material engagement can hardly achieve success in self-realization. Trying to practice yoga while engaging the mind in material enjoyment is like trying to ignite a fire while pouring water on it. Yoga practice without mental control is a waste of time. Such a show of yoga may be materially lucrative, but it is useless as far as spiritual realization is concerned. Therefore, one must control the mind by engaging it constantly in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Unless one is engaged in Krishna consciousness, he cannot steadily control the mind. A Krishna conscious person easily achieves the result of yoga practice without separate endeavor. But a yoga practitioner cannot achieve success without becoming Krishna conscious. Text 37 <clears throat> Arjuna Uvacha Ayati Shadeyopito Yoga Chaladimanasaha Aprapya Yoga Sang Siddhim Kangitim Krishna Gachchati Arjuna said, O Krishna, what is the destination of the unsuccessful transcendentalist who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization with faith but who later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism? Purport The path of self-realization or mysticism, is described in the Bhagavad Gita. The basic principle of self-realization is knowledge that the living entity is not this material body, but that he is different from it, and that his happiness is an eternal life, bliss and knowledge. These are transcendental, beyond both body and mind. Self-realization is sought by the path of knowledge, by the practice of the Eightfold System, or by Bhakti Yoga. In each of these processes, one has to realize the constitutional position of the living entity, his relationship with God, and the activities whereby he can re-establish the lost link and achieve the highest perfectional stage of Krishna Consciousness. Following any of the above-mentioned three methods, one is sure to reach the supreme goal sooner or later. This was asserted by the Lord in the second chapter. Even a little endeavor on the transcendental path offers a great hope for deliverance. Out of these three methods, the path of bhakti-yoga is especially suitable for this age because it, is, because it is the most direct method of God-realization. To be doubly assured, Arjuna is asking Lord Krishna to confirm to be doubly assured, Arjuna is asking Lord Krishna to confirm his former statement one may sincerely accept the path of self-realization, but, but the process of cultivation of knowledge 
and the practice of the Eightfold Yoga System are generally very difficult for this age. Therefore, despite constant endeavor, one may fall. Therefore, despite constant endeavor, one may fall, one may fail, for many reasons. First of all, one may not be sufficiently serious about following the process. To pursue the transcendental path is more or less to declare war on the illusory energy. Consequently, whenever a person tries to escape the clutches of the illusory energy, she tries to defeat the practitioner of material energy by various allurements. We'll repeat that. This is really important. Consequently, whenever a person tries to escape the clutches of the illusory energy, she tries to defeat the practitioner by various allurements. A conditioned soul is already allured by the modes of material energy, and there is every chance of being allured again, even while performing transcendental disciplines. This is called yogach chalati manasaha, deviation from the transcendental path. Arjuna is inquisitive to know the results of deviation from the path of self-realization. Text 38 Kach chin no baya bi brashtash chinabram ivanashyati apratishto mahabaho vimudo brahmanak priti O mighty armed Krishna, does not such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a riven cloud with no possession in any sphere with no position in any sphere purport there are two ways to progress those who are materialists have no interest in transcendence therefore they are more interested in material advancement by economic development or in promotion to the higher planets by appropriate work when one takes to the path of transcendence, one has to cease all material activities and sacrifice all forms of so-called material happiness. If the aspiring transcendentalist fails, then he apparently loses both ways. In other words, he can, he can enjoy neither material happiness nor spiritual success. He has no position he is like a riven cloud. A cloud in the sky sometimes deviates from a small cloud and joins a big one. But if it cannot join a big one, then it is blown away by the wind and becomes a non-entity in the vast sky. The Brahmanak Pati is the path of transcendental realization through knowing oneself to be spiritual in essence part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. <clears throat> the Brahman, Brahmanapati is the path of transcendental realization through knowing oneself to be spiritual in essence, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord who is manifested as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Lord Sri Krishna is the fullest manifestation of the Supreme Absolute Truth and therefore one who is surrendered to the Supreme Person is a successful transcendentalist. To reach this goal of life through Brahman and Paramatma, realization takes many, many births. Bahunam Janmanamante Therefore the supermost path of transcendental realization is bhakti yoga or Krishna consciousness the direct method text 39 etan me sankshyam krishna chetum arha shesheshtaha twadanyak sankshyasyasya 
Chaitana Upapadyate Chaitana Upapadyate This is my doubt, O Krishna, and I ask you to dispel it completely. But for you, no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Purport Krishna is the perfect knower of past, present, and future. In the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord said that all living entities existed individually in the past, they exist now in the present, and they continue to retain individual identity in the future. Even after liberation from the material entanglement, so he has already cleared up the question of the future of the individual living entity. Now, Arjuna wants to know about of the future of the unsuccessful transcendentalist. No one is equal to or above Krishna. And certainly, the so-called great sages and philosophers who are at the mercy of material nature cannot equal him. Therefore, the verdict of Krishna is final and complete. Therefore, the verdict of Krishna is the final and complete answer to all doubts because he knows past, present and future perfectly. But no one knows him. Krishna and Krishna conscious devotees alone can know what is what. Text 40 Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Partha Naive Hanamutra Vinashas Tasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Kaschit Durgatim Tattagachchati The Supreme Personality of God had said, Son of Prita, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. Purport Chaktva Sudharmam Chadanam Bhujam Harer Bhajan Apakvo Tapatet Tato Yadi Yatra Kova Bhadrama Bud Amushikim Kovarta Apto Bhajatam Swadharmataha. If someone gives up all material prospects and takes complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no loss or degradation in any way. On the other hand, a non devotee may fully engage in his occupational du duties and yet not gain anything. For material prospects, there are many activities, both spiritual and customary. For material, for material prospects, there are many activities, both scriptural and customary. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness. One may argue that by Krishna consciousness, one may attain the highest perfection if it is completed. But if one does not attain such a perfectional stage, then he loses both materially and spiritually. It is enjoined in the scriptures that one has to suffer the reaction for not executing prescribed duties. Therefore, one who fails to discharge transcendental activities properly becomes subjected to, the, to these reactions. The Bhagavatam assures the unsuccessful transcendentalist that there, is no, that there need be no worries, even though he may be subjected to the reaction for not perfectly executing prescribed duties. He is still not a loser because auspicious Krishna consciousness is never forgotten. And so one, and one, and one so engaged will continue to be so, even if he is low-born in the next life. On the other hand, one who simply follows strictly 
the prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. The purport may be understood as follows. <clears throat> Humanity may be divided into two sections, namely the regulated and the non-regulated. Those who are engaged simply in bestial sense gratifications without knowledge of their, of their next life or spiritual salvation may be, belong to the non-regulated section. And those who follow the principles of prescribed duties in the, in the scriptures are classified amongst the regulated section. The non-regulated section, both civilized and non-civilized, educated and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying the animal propensities, of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence, which is always miserable. On the other hand, those who are regulated by scriptural injunctions and do thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness certainly progress in life. Those who are following the path of auspiciousness can be divided into three sections namely, one, the followers of scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. Two, those who are trying to find ultimate liberation from material existence. And three, those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness. Those who are following the rules and regulations of the scriptures for material happiness may, further, may be further divided into two classes, those who are fruity workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. Those who are after fruity results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets, but still, because they are not free from material existence, they are not following the truly auspicious path. The only auspicious activities are those which lead one to liberation. Any activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation from material, the material bodily concept of life is not at all auspicious. Activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity. Then anyone who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts for the sake of making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist under severe austerity. And because the Eightfold Yoga system is directed toward the ultimate realization of Krishna consciousness, such practice is also auspicious. And no one who is trying his best in this matter need fear degradation. Text 41. <clears throat> Prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashwati samaha shuchinam srimatam gehe yoga brashto pijayate the unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy. Purport The unsuccessful yogis are divided into two classes. One is fallen after very little progress and one is fallen after long pr practice of yoga. <clears throat> the yogi who, who falls after a short period of practice goes to the higher planets where pious living entities are allowed to enter. After prolonged life there, one is sent back again to this planet to take birth in the family of righteous <clears throat> Brahmana, Vaishnava or 
aristocratic merchants. The real purpose of yoga practice is to achieve the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, as explained in the last verse of this chapter. But those who do not persevere to such an extent and who fail because of material allurements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And after that, they are given opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. Those who are born in such families may take advantage of the facilities and try to elevate themselves to full Krishna consciousness. Text 42 Yatha va yoginam eva kule bhavati dimatam etad di durlabhataram loki janma yadi dvisham Or, if successful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. Purport. Birth in a family of yogis or transcendentalists, those with great wisdom, is praised herein because the child born in such a family receives a spiritual impetus from the very beginning of his life. It is especially the case in, in the Acharya or Goswami families. Such families are very learned and devoted by tradition and training and thus they become spiritual masters. In India, there are many such Acharya families, but they have now degenerated due to insufficient education and training. By the grace of the Lord, there are still families that foster transcendentalists generation after generation. It is certainly very fortunate to take birth in such families. Fortunately, both our spiritual master, Om Vishnupad, Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and our humble self had the opportunity to take birth in such families. By the grace of the Lord, and by, by and, and both of us were trained in, in the devotional service of the Lord from the very beginning of our lives. Later on, we met by the order of the transcendental system. Text 43 Tatratam buddhisam yogam labhate parvadehi kam yatate chatato bhuyak samsitao kudunandana On taking such a birth, he revives the divine consciousness of his previous life and he again tries to make further progress in order to achieve complete success, O son of Kuru. Purport King Bharat, who took his third birth in the family of a good Brahmana, is an example of good birth for the revival of previous transcendental consciousness. King Bharat was the emperor of the world, and since his time, this planet has been, has been known among the demigods as Bharat Varsha. Formerly, it was known as Lilavrita Varsha. The emperor, at an early age, retired for spiritual perfection, but failed to achieve success. In his next life, he took birth in the family of a good Brahmana and was known as Jad Bharat because he always remained secluded and did not talk to anyone. And later on, he was discovered as the greatest transcendentalist by King Rahugana. From his life, from his life, it is understood that transcendental endeavors or the practice of yoga never go in vain. By the grace of the Lord, the transcendentalist gets repeated opportunities for complete perfection in Krishna consciousness. Text 44. Purvya bhyasena tenaiva 
Riyate Yabisho, Riyate Yabisho Pisaha, Jigyasur Apiyogasya, Shabda Brahmarti Vartate. By virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles, even without seeking them. Such an in inquisitive transcendentalist stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. Purport Advanced yogis are not very much attracted to the rituals of the scriptures, but they automatically become attracted to the yogic princip yoga principles, which can elevate them to complete Krishna consciousness, the highest yoga perfection. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 333.7, such disregard of Vedic rituals by the advanced transcendentalists is explained as follows. Aho, bhatta, chapacho, toguriyan, yaj jivagre, vartate, namatubhyam, tapustapaste, juhuvu, sashnaraya, brahmanu, churt, namagrinantaye, te. O my Lord, persons who chant the holy name <coughs> excuse me O oh my Lord persons who chant the holy names of your Lordship are far far advanced in spiritual life even if, even if born in families of dog eaters such chanters have undoubtedly performed all kinds of austerities and sacrifices bathed in all sacred places and finished all scriptural studies. The famous example of this was presented by Lord Chaitanya, who accepted Thakur, Thakur Haridas as one of his most important disciples. Although Thakur Haridas happened to take his birth in a Muslim family, he was elevated to the post of Namacharya by Lord Chaitanya due to his rigidly attended principle of chanting 300,000 holy names of the, of the Holy of the Lord daily. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And because he chanted the holy name of the Lord constantly, it is understood that in his previous life, he must have passed through all the ritualistic methods of the Vedas, known as Shabda Brahma. Unless, therefore, one is purified, one cannot take to the principles of Krishna consciousness or become engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Text 45. Prayatnad yatamanas tu yogi sang shudakil bishaha aneka janma sang siddhas tato yati padam gating. And when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately achieving perfection after many, many births of practice. He attains the supreme goal. Purport A person born in a particularly religious, aristocratic, or sacred family becomes conscious of his favorable condition for executing yoga practice. With determination, therefore, he begins his unfinished task, and thus he completely cleanses himself of all material contaminations. When he is finally freed from all contaminations, he attains the supreme perfection, Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the perfect stage of being freed of all contaminations. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 7.28. Yesham tvantagadang papang jananam punyakarmanam te dvanvo mohanir mukta Bajante mang vridavrataha. After many, many births of executing pious activities, 
when one is completely freed from all contaminations and from all illusory dualities, one becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Text 46 Tapaspi bhyo diko yogi jnani bhyo pimato dikaha karmi bhyas chadiko yogi tasmat yogi bhavarjuna A yogi is greater than the ascetic, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruitive worker. Therefore, O Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. PURPORT When we speak of yoga, we refer to linking our consciousness with the Supreme Absolute Truth. Such a process is named differently by various practitioners in terms of the particular method adopted. When the linking process is predominantly in fruitive activities, it is called karma yoga. When it is predominantly, predominantly empirical, it is called jnana yoga. And when it is predominantly in a devotional relationship with the Supreme Lord, it is called bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga, or Krishna consciousness, is the ultimate perfection of all yogas, as will be explained in the next verse. The Lord has confirmed herein the superiority of yoga, but He has not mentioned that it is better than bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is full spiritual knowledge, and therefore nothing can excel it. Asceticism without self-knowledge is imperfect. Empiric knowledge without surrender to the Supreme Lord is also imperfect. And fruitive work without Krishna consciousness, is a waste of time. Therefore, the most highly praised form of yoga performance mentioned here, here is Bhakti Yoga. And this is still more clearly ex explained in the next verse. Text 47 Yoginam apisar veshan madgatenan tadatmana shadhavan Bhajate yomam same yukta tamo mataha. And of all yogis, the one with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me. He is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. Purport. The word bhajate is significant here. Bhajate has, a, has its root in the verb bhaj, which is used when there is a need of service. The English word worship cannot be used in the same sense as bhaj. Worship means to adore or to show respect and honor to the worthy one. But service with love and faith is especially meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can avoid worshipping a respectable man or a demigod and may be called discourteous, but one cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. Every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus every living entity is intended to serve the Supreme Lord by his own constitution. Failing to do this, he falls down. The Bhagavatam 11.5.3 confirms this as follows. Jaesham purusham sakshad atma pravamam ishwara na bhajantya bhajananti stanad brishta pratantya daham stanad brashta Anyone who does not render service and neglects his duty unto the primeval Lord, who is the source of all living entities, will certainly fall down from his constitutional position. In this verse also, the word bhajanti is used. Therefore, 
bhajanti is applicable to the Supreme Lord only, whereas the word worship can be applied to demigods or to other common living entities, or to any other common living entity. The word abhajananti, used in this, in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, is also found in the Bhagavad Gita. Abhajananti mam mudha, only fool, only the fools and rascals deride the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Such fools take it upon themselves to write commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita without an attitude of service to the Lord. Consequently, they cannot properly distinguish between the word bhajanti and the word worship. The culmination of all kinds of yoga practices lies in bhakti yoga. All other yogas are but means to come to the point of bhakti, in bhakti yoga. Yoga actually means bhakti yoga. All other yogas are progressions toward the destination of bhakti yoga. From the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. Karma yoga without fruity results is the beginning of this path. When karma yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called jnana yoga. When jnana yoga increases in meditation on the super soul by different physical processes and increases in meditation on the super soul by different physical processes and the mind is on him, it is called astanga yoga. And when one surpasses the Ashtanga Yoga and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, Krishna, it is called Bhakti Yoga. I'll read this is so important. I'll read it again, this last part. (coughs) Karma Yoga. From the beginning of Karma Yoga to the end of Bhakti Yoga is a long way to self-realization. Karma yoga without fruitive, act, uh, without fruitive results is the beginning of, t- of this path. When karma yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called jnana yoga. When jnana yoga increases in meditation on the super soul by different physical processes and the mind is on him, it is called ashtanga yoga. And when one surpasses the Ashtanga Yoga and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it is called Bhakti Yoga, the culmination. Factually, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal. But to analyze Bhakti Yoga minutely, one has to understand these other yogas. The yogi who is progressive is therefore on the true path of eternal good fortune. One who sticks to a particular point and does not make it, uh, further progress is called by that particular name, karma yogi, jnana yogi, or dhyana yogi, raja yogi, hatha yogi, and so on. If one is fortunate enough to come to the point of bhakti yoga, it is to be understood that he has surpassed all other yogas. Therefore, to become Krishna conscious is the highest stage of yoga. Just as when we speak of Himalayan, we refer to the world's highest mountains, of which the highest peak, Mount Everest, is considered to be the culmination. It is by great fortune that one comes to Krishna consciousness on the path of bhakti yoga to become well situated according to the Vedic direction. The ideal yogi concentrates his attention on Krishna, who is called Shamasundar, who is as beautifully colored as a cloud, whose lotus-like face is as effulgent as the sun, whose dress is brilliant with jewels, and whose body is flower-garlanded. Illuminating all sides is his gorgeous luster, which is called the Brahmajyoti. 
he incarnates in different forms such as Rama, Nishinga, Varaha and Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he descends like a human being as the son of Mother Yashoda and he is known as Krishna, Govinda and Vasudeva. He is the perfect child, husband, friend and master he, and he is full with all opulences and transcendental qualities. If one remains fully conscious of these features of the Lord, he is called the highest yogi. This, high, this stage of highest perfection in yoga can be attained only by bhakti yoga, as is confirmed in all Vedic literature. Yasyadevi para bhaktir tata yata devi tata garo tasyaite katita yarta prakashante mahatmanaha Only those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge, knowledge automatically revealed. Hmm. Bhaktir asya bhajanam tad iha mutro padi naira sena mushyam muna kalpanam etad eva naishkaramyam. Bhakti means devotional service to the Lord, which is free from desire for material profit either in this life or in the next. Devoid of such inclinations, one should fully absorb the mind in the Supreme. That is the purpose of Naishkarmya. Gopal Tapani Upanishad 1.15 These are some of the means for, for, for performance of bhakti or Krishna consciousness, the highest perfectional stage of the yoga system. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purports to the sixth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of Jnana Yoga. All glories to Sri Krishna, all glories to Arjuna, the receiver of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and all glories to Srila Prabhupada, the divine commentator on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Hare Krishna. So that's the end of the first six chapters uh, of the Bhagavad Gita. We'll stop our reading there. The first six chapters more or less introdu introduce uh, the student to the principle of yoga and how bhakti yoga is the topmost yoga. Um, the famous uh, transcendental meditation teacher, Mah Mah Mahi. Mahesh Yogi, Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, um, translated the Bhagavad Gita up to the sixth chapter. But he didn't go past the sixth chapter because he wanted everybody to think that the, what he was teaching them was the highest thing. T tomorrow we'll begin the seventh chapter, which is the beginning of the middle six chapters which Srila Prabhupada called the most confidential part of the Bhagavad Gita, which is protected by the first six and the last six chapters of the Gita. Hare Krishna. So, uh, lots of wonderful thoughts have just come into our minds and hearts. If anyone wants to reflect on any of them, uh, please be our guest. Hare Krishna. First is from Rati Manjari. <coughs> Hare Krishna Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj. Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Happy Diwali to you and your loyal team and to all the daily readers. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Diwali. That means tomorrow is Govardhan Puja. Mm -hmm. Diwali just lights up the way to Govardhan Puja. And from Gopakanya. Hari Bo Gopakanya Devi Dasi Hare Krishna dear Maharaj and all friends 
Happy Krishna conscious Diwali to everyone. Hare Krishna. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada. And from Vilas Manjari. Hare Bo Vilas Manjari. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Nice to hear from you. Our Sydney temple opened a few weeks ago after a long lockdown, and I've been going to the morning program, so I couldn't make it to the live readings. But I still relish. But I'm still relishing the recordings every day. Thank you for reading. Thank you for being so loyal. You're one of the best and the longest standing hearers of the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna. From Sudevi Dasi. Yes, Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for another day of food for my soul. Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Yes, we take the food through the ear for the soul. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, in 1980, my daughter Mohini was born on Govardhan Puja. Wow, Hare Krishna. An auspicious mother, an auspicious daughter. And from Bhaktamatsu. Haribo Bhaktamatsu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So grateful to have the continued opportunity to hear these daily readings. Mm. There's no other place I would rather be than at your feet hearing Sri the Prabhupada's purport. Hare Krishna, thank you. Just the peon. Just the peon trying to deliver the mail. That's all. And uh, from Bhakta Rupa. Hari Bo Bhakta Rupa. He says, Wow, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Really loved hearing this chapter with you. Heard so many things that went under the radar in my last read through. <laughs> really love how Krishna and Prabhupada described the process of controlling the mind very clearly. It was really nice how Prabhupada concluded the chapter with a wonderful description of Shama Sundar. Hare Krishna. Yes, that was beautiful, wasn't it? How Krishna comments and uh, translates and comments in such a way that the reader cannot get the wrong idea. That's what makes his book so wonderful. If one reads them sincerely, cannot get the wrong idea. Therefore, we should center our lives and our movement should center its activities on giving Srila Prabhupada's books to others as they are. Daitya Hari Hari Das Hari Bo Hare Krishna Maharaj Thank you again for the reading Hearing about the different stages of the progression of yoga makes me very grateful that I am under the shelter of and being guided by great souls because on my own strength I wouldn't have a chance Well that quality belongs to everybody not just to you you know we can't actually understand this literature if we don't hear them in the association of devotees satam prasangam bhamavirya sambhavo Bhagavatam says that one cannot actually understand uh, or enter in, into the knowledge and unless one is hearing and chanting in the association of other devotees. So, welcome to the club. <laughs> this, is, it is, this isn't something that we're doing because we can't do it otherwise. This is the process. It's the process recommended by all of our acharyas by Srila Prabhupada time and time and time again. The purpose of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness was just to create an institution in which the center is hearing and chanting about Krishna so that people can come and become enlightened. And we as members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness are duty-bound and finally uh, 
fully uh, satisfied by hearing these books again and again in the company of other devotees. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Goranga Gopal. Hari Bo Goranga Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for this reading. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. I appreciate so much how merciful and kind Krishna is to give us, as described by Prabhupada in the purport of verse 43, mm. repeated opportunities for complete perfection of Krishna consciousness mm. and this life after life, mm. even though we willingly decide to forget him. I really don't want to miss this opportunity and wish it to be the last one. Hare Krishna, perfect desire. This is desirelessness, to desire nothing but that, perfection. And from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Hari Bol Anandamurti. Dear Gurudev and all devotees, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Today the word bhajanti, bhajate, mm. is stuck in my mind. Mm. All followers of Prabhupada are very fortunate to know this. That is why we offer devotional service to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna by hearing, chanting, and using everything which I have. Yes, I thought it was a very wonderful point also. Prabhupada pointed out that the word uh, bhaj or bhajanti is only applicable to Krishna. Mm -hmm. If you adore or honor or worship uh, anybody else, you can get away with it by, and be called discourteous or impolite or something. But you cannot, you cannot avoid worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead without being thoroughly condemned. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. This is from Bhaktin Maxine. Hare Bo Bhaktin Maxine. Hare Krishna. Welcome home back. Hare Krishna, dearest Maharaj. It really is wonderful to read with you live. I love being immersed in these beautiful books. Hmm. Yes, they are. Therefore, personally, I've dedicated my life to reading them out loud to others. Reading them out loud to others, even to yourself, but particularly to others, is non different than uh, remembering or meditating. It's non different than medi from meditating on Krishna to hear with rapt attention. Uh, and when you read the books out loud, even to yourself, but particularly to others, it's almost as if you're forced to hear with rapt attention. Otherwise, you can't read properly. So yes, this is the complete process. Hearing with rapt attention from Srila Prabhupada, from Krishna, through Srila Prabhupada's translation and purports, in the company of devotees who have the same taste, who like to hear. Hare Krishna. This is the goal of life, right here, right now. And then from Vilas Manjari again. Haribo Vilas Manjari. I've noticed when I read Bhagavad Gita to newcomers, they get a lot from the first six chapters, but struggle with the middle six chapters. I wonder if it is a good idea just to keep introductory classes to the first six. <coughs> Could you share your thoughts on this? Yeah, my thought is absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's why uh, the Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, translated only up to the sixth chapter. Because the seventh chapter to the twelfth chapter <coughs> reveals fully that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and this last six chapters culminates in the idea that one must surrender to Krishna only, to no one else, in order to be fully protected uh, 
and to become free from worries. So we don't want to deprive them of this. We just need to become more expert in explaining it. That's all. And if they can't understand and can't come, then we shouldn't lament because whatever they did here is eternal. It's a their eternal benefit, as we heard already in this chapter. But Krishna gets down to the real business beginning in the seventh chapter. So I think we should uh, present it as Srila Prabhupada presented it. And, though, therefore, and we, by doing that, we will attract the most sincere persons who can you know, come and help us spread the Christian consciousness movement. It may take time, and we should never become discouraged, even if it's a lot of people are not coming. So that's all right. Um, just keep it pure, and uh, everything will come organically, naturally, of its own accord. Hare Krishna. She says, thank you. Prabhupada once said, and, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said the same thing. The purpose of, it, of their movement is to find one person who will become a completely pure devotee. <laughs> if one person becomes a completely pure devotee, then the perpetuation of the movement is assured. So the goal is not in quantity, it's in quality. But the, the, qual the quality will breed the quantity in such a way that it will become very potent and very powerful. Hare Krishna. She says, yes, I noticed those that stay in through the middle chapters make more progress. Yes. <coughs> One more thing from Goranga Gopal. Haribo Goranga Gopal. I also wondered, I often meet these same persons in the street who are given so many opportunities to hear about Krishna, take a book, or else, but mm. never take it. I wonder what I can do to soften their heart so they can finally take to it. And I'm a little worried that something will happen to them when the opportunities will stop coming. Bring, bring along a bag full of cookies <laughs> and induce them to, to take the cookie. <laughs> Chant Hare Krishna in their ears. Make them chant Hare Krishna by, by any means. Trick them into it in whatever way you can. Just get them to say Hare Krishna. Because when they say Hare Krishna for the first time, in most cases, it's without offense because they have they don't know anything to be a, to make an offense. So they, when they first say Hare Krishna, it's very very powerful, and it will set them on the path. You may be, in, you know, in, involved in it or not, but that's not important. The main thing is that they hear the holy name of the Lord, you know, coming from their own mouth, at least once without an offense. Hare Krishna. and leave the rest to Krishna. <laughs> it all works because Krishna is in the heart of everyone and he's actually choreographing everyone. So it may seem like, how is that possible? It's because Krishna is there in the heart. And when he hears a person say Hare Krishna, uh, he likes it. And from that time on, he helps. Thank you very much for your wonderful um, reflections and and uh, discussion. Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, ki jai. Samabeda bhakta brinda ki jai. Gore premanandi hari hari bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. Krishna is going to delve into the middle 
seven cha- six chapters, the most important chapters of the book, Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.